And hello, this is Older Gamers with another video today. And this one's going to be a little longer than normal, so I apologize for that. But Starfield's been out for a while now, and everybody has their opinions on it, and everybody's opinion is valid. And there's a few things a lot of people have mentioned that they wish it had that it doesn't have, or if it had done things like other games, and particularly games like No Man's Sky and Elite Dangerous. And some of the things I agree, I, I was a little disappointed you couldn't fly onto a planet and, you know, no land vehicles. But I'm going to discuss this and, you know, maybe kind of come to a conclusion as to why they couldn't do some of the things they did. In part because if they'd have done everything everybody wanted, the game wouldn't have come out probably until, you know, I don't know, 2035 maybe. So... One of the first things I'm going to talk about is No Man's Sky. Landing on planets and how you get a, around on planets once you're on them. Um, in No Man's Sky, it's easy to land on a planet. doesn't take any skill. In fact, you can dive, go as fast as you can into a planet and still survive. So landing on a planet is possible. It would be much harder in a game with multiple biomes, I believe. Um, but it is possible, and they make it easy. So, you know, there's ways I wish that maybe Starfield would have had something similar. And also, then, there's the whole deal of land travel. People complain that you have to walk everywhere in Starfield. And No Man's Sky has their exocraft. But in a way, it's not very... Ooh! realistic as you can see you just drive right through big rocks and everything so that's not real realistic but it does make getting around on a planet a whole lot easier and you can mine minerals from it and those kind of things and say you get tired of this exocraft well you can easily call a different one. Maybe you like this big giant one. And, you know, it's a good exocraft. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, being able to just call everything from anywhere is not very realistic. And the, kind of the same goes for your ships. In No Man's Sky, you can call your ship from anywhere as long as you rem remember to have fuel in the uh, and the thrusters to, you know, so it can actually come back to you. And, you know, that would come in handy in Starfield, but Starfield has fast travel. Now let's go to Elite Dangerous. Landing on a planet in Elite Dangerous. Much more difficult than No Man's Sky. Um, in many ways, I enjoy this part of um, Elite Dangerous. It's very realistic, or probably about as realistic as you can get. And I don't think I would want Starfield to have this level of realism and difficulty. Because, well, if I want this level of difficulty, I'll load up Elite Dangerous. Um... But it's definitely more difficult than No Man's Sky. And if you, as you're watching these videos, when I do the parts from Elite Dangerous, please remember I really haven't played Elite Dangerous in about a month. And it's one of those games where if you're not playing it every day, you will kind of forget how to do things. Um, you, you get rusty. And it makes it quite a bit harder when you're a little rusty. Not so much on this landing here that I did, but uh, a little later I'm going to show you in my SRV, you know, about how to get around on a planet. And uh, it was a low gravity planet, which is a little difficult, and I, I really had a hard time controlling my speed and where I was going. But as you can see, it it's much more difficult and probably more realistic landing on a planet in Elite Dangerous. Um, when I first started using a controller, I got the hang of it, and then when I got my PC and switched over to HOTAS, 
man, I couldn't really land where I wanted to land at first. It took me a couple days to kind of get the feel for it. And even on this one, since I hadn't done it in about a month, I kind of had to like, oh, maybe I'll go for this spot instead of that other one. But like you can see, you can, you can fly wherever you want on the planet, which is something I know a lot of people wish Starfield had. And I'm one of them. I wish it did. It would make it more fun than just picking a spot and then there's a cutscene. But I also understand that it makes it much more difficult. You have physics and all these other things to consider. So, and as you see, I, I use Auto Land a lot just because it's easier. You know, but yes, I do know how to land my ship on a planet and I can even land in a space station now, which was probably the hardest thing I had to learn in Elite Dangerous. But what I'm going to show you here is first we're going to exit the ship on foot and kind of show you how you get around on the foot in Elite Dangerous. Um, one thing you don't have in Elite Dangerous is ship interiors. I'll get to that a little bit later. And here we are. We're on foot in Elite Dangerous Odyssey, of course. And, uh, you know, there's your stairway to your ship. And this planet's a little bare and there's not a whole lot here, but most of the planets in Elite Dangerous don't have a whole lot of, they have a little bit of uh, flora, but no fauna. And to get into your ship, it's a cutscene. You know, you're not going to board your ship and then be in your ship and walk to your seat and be, have a chance to walk around your ship, like I'll show later on in Starfield. Now let's go to the SRV and this is where you'll probably laugh a little bit because um, if you're on a low gravity planet it's it's a little more difficult to control your SRV uh, the speed and you know turns um, you're gonna see a really good turn here in a minute um, but I too wish that we had something like this in Starfield having to walk everywhere does get kind of old although as long as you're not over encumbered you can fast travel back to your ship you don't have to walk back to your ship and here's my good turn whoa yeah okay but you have to consider that you would also need to have the same form of transportation for your follower uh, whether it would be an SRV like this or maybe like a motorcycle type thing in Star Wars you know you'd both have to have one um, and docking my SRV in Elite Dangerous, I had a hard time figuring that out at first, but you, I thought you had to be perfectly straight in, but you can actually go in sideways and get your SRV back in the ship. So that's how Elite Dangerous handles planetary walking, getting around on a planet with what they call an SRV. And it's great. It's fun. And it's pretty realistic, and especially with different planets have different gravity and everything acts different same with when you're flying through space in elite dangerous there's gravitational pulls when you're going from one planet to another that um no man's sky doesn't have and definitely starfield doesn't okay so now starfield this is how you land on a planet in starfield you open up the map and you find where you want to land and you're going to click on it and you hit the button and get to a loading screen and then a little cutscene of your ship will come up and you land and yeah i was disappointed at first that starfield did this i was actually quite disappointed but again you got to consider that if you have physics and all that take it into account it would have taken much longer for them to finish this game there would have been more bugs it would have worked as good and then walking around on a planet yeah it can take a while especially if the place you want to go is you know 1400 meters from where you're at you have to walk all the way over there and coming back if you've got a lot of loot it really takes a long time but you can fast travel where you want to go you can fast travel back to your ship 
and you can choose whether you want to fast travel on the outside of your ship and then go in your ship or you can fast travel and be sitting in the uh, the pilot seat of your ship which comes in handy especially for people who don't have hours and hours and hours a week to play games I do I'm retired so you know I have time it's no big deal but a lot of people don't now here's one thing I do really really like about Starfield and that's ship interiors when I first started playing Elite Dangerous and I'd read posts about it people were complaining oh I want ship interiors I want ship interiors and I was kind of like why I, I didn't get it until I had it I guess it's really kind of nice and there's you know you can put stations in there for to work on your weapons your space suits you know create food so I actually really like that they have ship interiors and now I understand why so many of the long-term elite dangerous players have been calling for it forever especially when you consider that the ships in elite dangerous are huge I mean you know there's there's just a lot of things you could be doing in your ship besides just walking around and going oh look how pretty that is so as you can see here it, it's it's really kind of nice you can sit down you can have crew members and see them and it's kind of nice and then when you go to take off from a planet unlike no man's sky or elite dangerous you just hit a button and Boom! There's going to be a little loading screen, and then your, you know, the, the visual here of your ship taking off and going into space. And sometimes it kind of cracks me up when you're in a, a like, New, New Atlantis, it almost hits the towers, and you know they wouldn't allow that. And there, now you're in space. So, another thing in Starfield that's different than say No Man's Sky or Elite Dangerous is how you see here you go you, sometimes you can just kind of fast travel land and you're there you know you can do that I can get here from any system by fast travel and there's no, no cutscenes no nothing and you know here we are at the the pyramids which was I thought was really cool the first time I went here and again you can fast travel back to your ship you don't have to walk back I think a lot of people thought you were gonna actually have to walk back which would have been really really well, not very good <laughs> to put it mildly and again going into your ship unlike elite dangerous and no man's sky obviously because the ships aren't big enough you could choose whether to be in the cockpit seat or get in and walk around your ship which hey i'm i'm definitely a fan of that now if uh, elite dangerous ever does that i'd be like yeah that'd be cool especially with those ships so again here we are taking off from the planet in starfield very nice cutscene. Your ship looks cool, but you're not doing it. And a lot of people are disappointed in that. And I definitely was one of them. If they could have done it, say, of a combination of No Man's Sky and Elite, well, I'll get into that later. And I think, yeah, we're going to show now the difference in traveling between systems in the game. In Starfield, you open up the map. Um, this system only has one planet so you'll get out of this system and there's all the different stars and d places you can go in the game and if you want to go to another system you know you kind of figure out where you want to go for whatever reason and you're gonna choose a system and in this case I'm gonna pick Seoul and say I want to go to my base on Luna so you're gonna go you'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what you're doing and you're gonna click on Luna 
and then you'll find where you want to land on Luna. Now, I thought one cool thing was being able to visit the Apollo landing sites. Very cool. So let's do that. And once again, there wasn't jumping between systems at all. It's all just fast travel. And like I said, if you don't have hours and hours and hours to put into a game, this is definitely a time saver. And while there's a few things that I wish Starfield had and did differently, I have thoroughly enjoyed the game. I'm not saying I haven't. But in this particular case where I landed, my ship wasn't very close. And bam, now I'm back in my ship. Now, traveling between systems in No Man's Sky. You open up your galaxy map. You find the system you want to go to. And you have to map to it. In this case, it's just one, one jump. And bam, you go into your hyperspace or whatever you want to call it and you'll jump to the next system. In a minute here, I'll show you how you do that in Elite Dangerous, which is definitely, well, it's not harder, but more complex and takes longer. And there's times I think that had Starfield done what some people really wanted them to do, they'd have complained that it took too long to play the game. And here's how you go into a space station, or if this was your freighter or the anomaly, boom, you just kind of aim towards it, and boom, you, you don't have to, you're, you're not in control here. It does it for you, it lands for you. And so that's fairly easy. So I kind of wish maybe Starfield kind of had this. I'll show Starfield how you dock here in a little bit, but uh, No Man's Sky definitely has the way they did things is good, but like on planets, one reason why they can't have multiple biomes on a planet is because of the way they do it. It'd be much harder to create a game where you had multiple biomes that you could just fly into and land. There's kind of that in Elite Dangerous, but not really. So Elite Dangerous, here's how you go. Okay, you have your system map. And if you wanted to go to one planet, you'd click on that planet and then you would have to fly to that planet. And that's one thing people wish Starfield had. And I admit, I do too, but maybe not have it take as long as it takes in Elite Dangerous, maybe more like planetary travel in No Man's Sky. So you map out where you want to go. And in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and try and go where I have my all my ships stored right now. It's kind of my home base. Jameson Memorial. So you'll plot your course and you'll see that in order to get where you want to go, it's two jumps. So let's show how you would do that in Elite Dangerous compared to Starfield or No Man's Sky. And it's definitely takes longer. And because of the way they do it, you'll find that if you're not paying attention you can get into a lot of trouble because in No Man's Sky when you warp to a system you're right near the space station. In Elite Dangerous you, you jump to the largest mass in the system which is the star. So if you're not paying attention you can actually damage your ship and especially if you're not paying attention and you don't get the heck out of there you, you can actually destroy your ship and Unlike Starfield and No Man's Sky, if you destroy your ship in Elite Dangerous, it costs you a lot of money. They have an insurance thing, you know, the Geico of the stars or whatever you want to call it. But you definitely don't want to lose your ship in Elite Dangerous because it costs you a lot of money. And in Elite Dangerous, you have to feel your ship when you're doing this. And, you know, you'll go by the star and you'll scoop. I didn't need to particularly right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go past the star in that system and point my way towards my the next system where I need to go, which is the system I'm going to. So, as you can see, it took two jumps, it took a while, and there's danger of running into the star and there's danger of interdictions by space pirates and 
everything. If you know, if you don't have cargo, that doesn't happen very often. But even then, it sometimes happens. But usually, if it's an NPC, they'll just say, "Oh, you got nothing I want." I I, I don't play in open, so I've never been ganked by anybody that just likes to blow up people. I I don't do that because I don't want to deal with that. It, to me, it's just not fun. And I'm a space trucker and a space explorer and I avoid fighting in Elite Dangerous whenever I can in part because I don't want to have to pay to replace my ship so then again if I wanted to go to there I I didn't plot it correctly apparently because normally it'll automatically plot you and then you just fly to your station and here's how you fly into a station you have to request docking and they say yes okay you can do that and there's all these other screens that you can look at and one thing in this game is docking at a space station is probably one of the hardest things to learn I couldn't do it at first now as you're gonna see I'm using auto dock just for because for me it gives me a chance if I need to use the restroom or whatever I don't have to worry about flying in but I did finally learn how to do it I can do it, except I have, can't really, haven't really been successful in, I think it's the Type 9 Heavy. It's a big ship. You can barely get it through what they call the mail slot in this game. But as you can see, Elite Dangerous, it looks so realistic. The first time I saw a station, and this one doesn't have any, but some of them have advertising billboards as you're going in. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I, uh, and I'm like... You know, they probably would be, wouldn't there? And so, auto landing, you land, and with Elite Dangerous Odyssey, you can actually get out of your ship in most stations. There are some places that don't have it. Kind of like Starfield, where everybody says the planetary settlements are all pretty much the same. On every planet, there's like just, you know, maybe 10 of them that they just placed everywhere on different planets. Most of the space stations you go to are pretty much the same. Um, this type of station will look pretty much the same on all of them. Now the inside where you land, sometimes there's some really cool like statues and where you can see they're growing stuff. The, the richer system stations where they, they're, you know, more money have that. So you go to disembark and here we are we're inside this huge space station and i got a bit i was kind of blown away the first time i was able to do this because i had played this game on uh, console before i got it on pc and you couldn't get out of your ship and as you can see this isn't one of the biggest ships in the game but the thing is huge so imagine all the different stations and pl things you could have inside that ship if you could walk around it and the advertisements and they're all pretty much the same but some of them will have trash right here pizza boxes laying on the floor so they're not all exactly the same but the layouts are pretty much the same and we'll go inside here and i will show you the inside of a station um this one's pretty clean maybe a couple things on the floor there yeah a little bit but some of them are really trashy and you'll go up here and you'll have the this is the apex shuttle where you you know if you need to for some reason you can use them to get from one station to another and sometimes one system to another as long as it's not too far this is where you would sell your data if you were out on planet scanning uh, flora and that I really enjoy and it's actually quite lucrative now at first it wasn't but it is now um, you can buy ships there and you can also do it from your ship or from this little computer and here's also where you could get missions let's say well they have missions where you they somebody needs you to take a pan a package to a station on one of the planets in that system or sometimes it's a station in a different system and you get paid a little bit more money for that and you can also do ships and things there and just about every one of them has a bar and you have an NPC that might give you a, a a mission and this is what it looks like from the bar looking in the station and, and the thought of what you're only seeing a small portion of this station you're not seeing where everybody lives these things must be huge I, I know they're 
some of them are like I can't remember three four seven kilometers long I, I can't remember exactly so the, you know these space stations are huge compared to what you see in No Man's Sky or a few orbiting platforms in Starfield here is how you dock in a planet on or not planet but dock at a station in Starfield now this particular one was part of a earlier mission so I've actually already been here before um, but after a certain amount of time you can land and, they'll, and the an enemies will respawn so you can go in there and you can do what you need to do and shoot them and grab their stuff and sell it and make money but the process is a lot easier than Elite Dangerous. You just say you want to dock and it goes to a cutscene like this and you dock. It's easy. It's not hard. I actually kind of like this over the other, but if you want if I want to be really realistic then I, I prefer the Elite Dangerous way. So once you've docked, then to get out you're gonna go to the hatch that goes to your docking mechanism and you'll click the button and that was not it that was the one to go to the ground there we go so now you're in the station that you've landed at and like you can see i mean there's blood on the walls this i've been here already and you know made quite a mess in this place um and it's a pretty good sized station and like I said you can go back to one Nova Galactic it was part of a, a quest earlier in the game that I did and you know you kill everybody the first time but, but you can go back later if you just like doing that sort of thing and you'll see here in a minute I'm gonna get attacked and uh, I one thing in this game I definitely enjoyed more than I thought I would was the combat a lot of people have don't like it I guess if you're like a Call of Duty PvP type person then it's probably not very good but I actually kind of enjoy it it's fun and it's not particularly difficult and some people definitely wanted the difficulty and me I, I can do without that matter of fact I avoid uh, this type of situation in Elite Dangerous all the time because I tried it early on and it was very difficult I got killed every time but now I've got better weapons so I've, I might have to go back and give some of it a try and see if I can do it what I usually do up till now is I just take my ship and I get to wherever the, the outpost is and if it's a, on a planet and I, I just fire a bunch of uh, dumb fire missiles at the people running around because you can see them running around so I kill them that way and wipe out almost all of them and then I'll kill the rest in my SRV I don't do much hand-to-hand -hand or you know person-to-person -person combat in that game yet but I'm gonna have to give it a try because I have gotten some better weapons but I've actually enjoyed this part of Starfield very much I was really really surprised and you can make a lot of money going around shooting them you take their guns their spacesuits and everything a lot of them times they'll have credits resources and you can make a lot of money doing this um, I've got close to a million credits in Starfield because I really there's really not that much to spend it on unless you want to buy new ships but I'm happy with the ones I have I bought one called the shield breaker which I've modified since to make it even better so I and I've stolen a couple ships one of them was a really nice ship you can do that I like that you can do that in in Starfield but you got to be careful that you don't do that to a ship that's got friendly people to you because then you'll get a bounty and you're follower hates you and all that as I found out one time before I realized that I was shooting good guys and I like some of the little things you see like please fix this uh, there's a vending machine at one of the medical uh, satellites that uh, cracked me up it's got a vending machine with fix this thing please because you know, apparently it needed to be fixed so this is what it's like to be inside a station in Starfield. Um, there are no real space stations like there is in Elite Dangerous where you're going to go and you're going to buy 
supplies. Well, there is if you are part of the Crimson folks, but that's kind of different. For the most part, there isn't space stations that you land at on a, at a regular basis where you buy supplies and buy ships and stuff. There are some, but not as many. So then, let's say you've done what you need to do. You want to go back to your ship. So you're going to go back to your ship. And once again, you get the option. You can go in the cockpit or you can just go inside the ship and walk yourself back up to the where you're going to go. So that's some of the main things that I wanted to point out between Starfield and some of the things people ask for and Elite Dangerous and um, No Man's Sky that people would compare it to. Now, my perfect game would be Starfield, the, the quests of Starfield with some of the planetary travel of Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky mixed in, but not make it really hard. So anyways, I hope this kind of explains some of the things. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, I thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like and share this video with your friends, and as always, I thank you for taking time out of your day to watch one of my videos. Thank you.